Hey everyone, today we're going to look at the different ways you can do print screens for Minecraft Education Edition. All right, so this is going to be different depending on the, the device that you're on. So we're going to go how to do it on a MacBook. We're going to go through how to do it on a Windows device. And we're also going to go through how to do it on an iPad. So let's start with the MacBook. So with a MacBook, um, it can be a little bit tricky depending on what you're flying because we have to use the shift key and the shift key um, actually makes you fly down, um, which makes things a bit fun. So sometimes you do need a little bit of speed to do this one. So if I want to just take a photo of my entire screen, it is command shift three. So if we go command shift three, um, that's taken that whole photo. And if I go escape, I can see that photo comes up in that bottom corner there. Now, sometimes for students, that's fine because uh, on a Mac, we have this ability to crop. So I might come down and go, I only want from there. Um, I don't want me, not sure that'll do. Um, and then I can go done and then that will save. And then for a Mac, that's going to save onto your desktop. There it is there. Okay. So there is my photo. Your other option is, which can be a little bit tricky, is you can go Command Shift 4. So Command Shift 4, the only problem is you tend to keep falling. Um, and then if you hit space bar to start flying, you get this um, changed option where you have to click and it just takes a photo of the whole screen again. Um, so Command Shift 4, in my opinion, is only good if you're already standing on the ground. So Command Shift 4. Your cursor changes a little bit. I know it's a little bit small. I'm going to put it up there in the top left-hand corner, but this is where I can go, okay, well, I, I just want this perspective there. So just capture that space and then I'm done. And so you can see from my photo, let's wait for that to disappear. Once it disappears, it saves onto your desktop and it's gone. So we go to the desktop. Here it is here. Let's open that up. And there it is, that's, that perspective is already done. So that's how you, that's your best options to do it on a MacBook. Okay, so iPads, and let's have a look at how we can do this. Now I'm gonna show you an image because iPads, not that they're tricky, it's that they're all a little bit different. So if I just bring this up, perfect. It's really gonna be dependent on the model that you have. And these are the three most current configurations of iPads that are on the market. So you kind of got this traditional one that has the, um, the home button down in the bottom. But as you're probably phasing in and out of different devices, you might notice that you don't have that home button anymore. You've kind of got the swipe up options. So depending on which one of these looks like the iPad that you're using is how you're going to have to do it. So you have to hit both the buttons at the same time. So I'm actually still on this older version here, the one on the left. So if I just click back, let's bring up my iPad there for a second. And so let's um, say this is what I want to take a photo of. So for me, I kind of have to hit that round circle button and the power button. So at the same time, and there it is. Now, what I can do is I can tap on that straight away and that brings it up on the screen. And just like before, I've got my functionality here where I can move this down, move this up if I don't want that, if I want to go a little bit more broad screen. The iPads are really nice as well because you also then have that that animation style. So um, I could technically ask my students to um, label this. Okay, so we they could be circling it. And if got, I'm using my finger here, but if they had a stylus, um, you know, we could they could actually um, write down what it is. Sorry for my terrible handwriting. Um, so they can actually muck around and play with some of those extra functionalities that are available on an iPad. From there, you know, we can choose the share button as well. And we can share to do that. We might be using a Teams assignment. We might be saving it in our OneDrive. We might be using one of the, or we might be using classrooms or classwork, whatever it may be. We might just be airdropping as well. So that is how we do a screen, um, print screen or a screenshot on an iPad. Okay, so let's have a look at how we can do this on a Windows device. Now you've got two options. You've got Windows key print screen. So these two here, and that will um, essentially capture the entire screen or you've got Windows key um, shift S. So I'll quickly show you print screen. Print screen is pretty easy. So if I go Windows key 
print screen. Um, it's taken a photo, saves that to my photos on my device. But my favorite is the Windows key shift S. So if I go Windows key shift S, okay, you may fly down a little bit. So take into consideration, um, you might want to be a little bit higher than um, where you were. And this original setting is probably my favorite because you are going to just normally need a box. So if I don't want to include myself there in that image, I can just grab that space and then it does kind of do this little save bit. But what is nice is the snip in um, sketch tool opens up. And this is where, again, I can come in. Oh, ignore that one. Um, <laughs> where I can come in and I can use my stylus. I can write on the page. I can cropped as well. All of those options just kind of instantly come up this way. It's why I tend to prefer it. Um, now, if you don't click on it straight away, it kind of feels like it disappears. Um, but it does also save um, into like your um, copy and paste commands. Uh, so I can always still go into a document and hit um, control V and that picture will actually paste into that space. All right, so that is how we do it on a Windows device. I hope you find this super helpful and we'll see you again soon. Cheers.